Greetings everybody and welcome to the next episode of FTB Infinity. Hope you are well. Yes, you see me in the bath. Yes, bath, bath. You see me relaxing in the, the, the soapy waters of my flux ward thing stuff. Uh, oh, I seem to have something on my face. Oh, it's my armor. So, what's happening? Where are we? What are we doing? What's, what's occurring? Well, this is my little warp bath uh, to get rid of nasty warp uh, that you can actually get from uh, doing lots of magic and stuff and things. So yeah, so every time you pop in there, reduce your warp. Is it warp? I think it's warp. Not quite sure, but anyway, it's bad. It's bad for you. Don't think I've got any on the roof. I've been doing quite a lot of Thorncraft stuff. Uh, fleshing out the book. Uh, this is the kind of the boring magical stuff that no one's really interested, but I quite like it. I get into it uh, on a big scale and I think everything that's complete now This is complete. This one I think is complete. Let's just have a look see uh, Appears to be appears to be uh, Golemancy I've literally just started uh, Ooh, Eldritch tab has appeared Ooh, wasn't aware of this one prior to uh, prior to the recording. So I could do with that the sanity check, because that's good for how much warp you're actually receiving. Intriguing. We may be able to go into the Eldritch biome at some point, which is something I'm looking forward to. That and the bedrock uh, biome, which apparently you can get by using Ecorium. Uh, but you can only get Ecorium once you've completed every single. Uh, research option in here and that's that's quite a feat to do that so where are we then where are we as, as of the last recording well i've now put an infusion provider in here so i don't have to put uh, little jars of things around the outside this will now draw directly from my system in here so it'll pull out all of these i'll be making these by using an alchemical furnace and throwing in the attributes that I need and then just having a pull it out uh, and throw it back into this system. I've also got uh, an alchemical centrifuge so what I do with this is let's say uh, 5k of aurum just pop that in there like there and what you can do is you can just basically run it through the rinser again and that will break it down. You'll probably get a lot of aurum back but you'll also get some other aspects as well. It's not too bad. I've also gone and made some new scepters. Here we go. Some thormium embossed great wood staff. I've got another one, uh, which is going to be the silver wood one. Somewhere cooking up. Can't quite remember where I put that now. But let's just pop this in here because we don't need this. Unless that's it there. No. Is it in here? No. What is this? Uh, let's just have a look. That's the Silverwood Wand. That's eventually going to be the uh, the Silverwood Staff. Hmm. So things have been moving on in here. Let's get out of here for a second. Because this is dull. So what have we done over at the village? That was where we were last time. I've done a little bit more uh, beautification on the, the place. Put some more flowers down. Also done some little little straps using using tracks as if it's been strapped down. Some loose boxes and like packing crates and things like that. Got another one back here, got some over that side. We've also I've just thrown this down. This is a trading post. This is handy if you have lots of villagers. So what you could do is you could wander around all the villagers and then see what they have for trade. Or you can just pop one of these down and it will look in the vicinity and see what is available to trade. So like here you've got five quicksilver for one emerald. Click on that, it'll find a villager and then you can go and trade. A heck of a lot easier than running around after these bouncing fools. Look at this guy. What is the point? What is the point? You, what is the point? Hmm. So yes, uh, excuse the fart bubbles, I've got warp wand on me at the moment, uh, which means I have these little fart bubbles every now and again that you can see. 
But what have we done in the houses? Well, we've put in little bits and pieces, little oak cases and things. I've gone through the bibliocraft stuff and seen what we can pop in here. We've got some books in here. I think you can open these. There you go. Uh, and then we've got little writing desks and little clocks. It's all very neat. And what else have we got in here? Oh, we've got a jar of cookies. A jar of cookies and some tool racks. And I've just been going around just adding little things. Hello, sorry to bother you. Uh, adding little things, you know, little more stuff in here. Just generally adding a little bit of character to the environment. Yeah, I think it looks rather nice. It's a little bit too compact, but I don't know. I quite like it. Quite like it. Uh, so let's bob through here. I've also done the path on the way through now. Made that a bit more unified. So you're not having to jump around. And I like the way you get these little raised areas. If you leave flowers and grass and you just do the trodden dirt underneath. Yeah, it gives, gives you a little uh, little bit of something. Yeah. So let's just bob back into the house. And yeah, there's nothing to report over there. Bob in. I put this blue stain clay down. And I've changed that to red stain clay. Again, I'm needing to do something. Not quite figuring out what I'm needing to do yet with this, but hey ho. And nothing's changed down here. Nothing's changed down here. Now I have actually let's look at the list. That might be easier. Let's get the list off. So village of town, done. Entrance and bridge, noob. End fortress, noob. Draconic peds, noob. RF tools, noob. With the farm cleanup, eh, it's kind of gone. Thorn Tower, nope. Uh, inscribers into AE. Now, we have, to, oh, we have actually moved the lasers as well. I'll just show you that downstairs. Let's just, well, let's take this with us so we can see what we're doing. Pop that up there. Uh, where are the lasers? No, the lasers were up here. Let's just pop down here. Get up that side. Now, the lasers were over here but now the moves over to this side for the time being I still need to pop one brick there and I've started to branch off here should I need to go in this direction down here I've just just carved out this area and done a test area for the inscribers and it's kind of working well to be honest it's uh, it's rather good I've got some basic inscribers here with the each with a different press in it and then on the interface, I have the encoded pattern that says what I require. Once it's finished with that pattern, it pops it out the side here, throws it into this one, and in this one we've got the printed silicon and the redstone. So that just pops in the redstone, that one just pops in the silicon, and this down here just inserts whatever comes out of these three machines here. Not the fourth one, because the fourth one is silicon press, and that will go in at the top. So all I have to do, if I need processors, is let's have a look at the craftable ones. Let's go, oh, I want ooh, police, very good. I want a hundred of those, off it'll go. And it'll start that process and you'll see it, there you go, popping in here. Nice and fast, because I've thrown in some acceleration cards as well. That should now pop into here. And then from there, it... Where does it go from there? That is a valid point. Where does it go from there? Ah, oh, right. It, uh, let's just get up over here. I have a little uh, import bus down there that will only import one of the three processors. I'll increase the capacity so I can pop all three of those in. And that will feed back into the system back here. <laughs> Lovely stuff. So while I'm at it, let's get some silicon and let's craft up about a thousand of those and let that fire off as well. Just like so. The redstone, it's pulling from uh, the AE system. So this chest here, by the way, is just an overflow chest. And why is there? All right, yeah, this is just an overflow chest because these actually work faster than this one. 
So what will happen is these will start jamming up. So this is just a little overflow so that the uh, the processors can pop down here. Well, the unfinished ones, they're just the printed circuits. And then from there, they can pop into this, this little box here. All nice and simple. And then over here in this side, we have another little test area because I needed to, according to this, which one was it? Liquid crafting, there we go. Uh, so I've popped in some, just a little test area that I'm just testing some things out. Nothing, as you can see there, is, is fully finished yet. It's all still fleshed out. This is just the workings of it. It's a bit of a mess, quite frankly. But I will get round to that at a later date, I think. So let's just pop through. What else have we got? That's it from this side. So let's uh, go into there, inscribers. Uh, the inscribers that I've got back here, I will probably move. I just tested it in this area just to see what it's like. I may have to do some rerouting of the cables to set it back. Uh, yeah, not quite sure where this is going to fit at the moment. But at the moment, it's, it's, it, it's working. You know, it's doing what it's supposed to do. Which is always a good thing. So let's just pop out here. Uh, ooh, night time. Gotta go sleep. Do a bit of that. Yeah, as you can see here, I've got... Uh, in this text here, I've, I've had some stomach upsets due to uh, bad warp. Uh, uh, ignore this fly mode thing at the top. If for some reason it always sets me to fly mode whenever I log on, being the admin of the server. So I just disable it, so I don't need that. But yeah, I've been getting some quite bad tummy troubles with uh, with warp. And you do actually poo yourself. You poo little uh, purple blocks on the floor, which is always fun. Uh, so let's just go back to where we were. No, nope. where, where am I going now? This is the problem with this place. I end up getting lost in my own base. Some say it's too big, but hey ho. So I think what we'll look at this episode is the RF tools. We need to uh, start this up. Let's pop this back on the wall. Now I've got everything I need for the RF tools. Well, everything I think I need for the RF tools is just knowing where I'm going to pop it. Now, ideally, I'd love to pop it somewhere close because it's going to be something I'm going to be using fairly often. So I may look at this side over here. So let's start. How much space do we have on the map? Uh, we have quite a substantial area here that we could use. That's not too bad. The bees are over this side, I think. Yeah, this is the bee area. So we could go in this direction and maybe have a window out to the B area on this side. Don't know, what I'll do is I'll just have a bit of a dig. Uh, dig in this direction. See what we come up with. Uh, is that? Yeah, that's safe. See what we come up with. And have I got any torches? Probably not. Oh, I do. What a surprise. I'm just going to dig through here and see what's on the other side, how far that might be. Nope, pop that there. Can we? No, we can't right click. That's no, just a tinkers thing. That's a shame. But let's just... This looks like we're nearing the end. Let's get my shovel, my excavator, on the job. Getting there, getting there, nearly there, nearly through. That's, uh, I didn't mean to do that. Try that again, shall we? Uh, let's pop down a bit of that. See, normally I do a lot of this off camera while I'm testing things out. Uh, now, we should be out by here. Unless I'm too low. Oh, oh, oh dear. Uh, Alright, I'm underneath the fish area. Right, I get it. I know where I am now. I know where I am. 
So that's probably as far as we can go in that direction. I thought we were higher than that on this side. But never mind. Never mind. So what I'll do is I'll dig some of this out and I'll look at the area that we're going to need and also this is going to need to be dug down for the steps. So and then we've got three here and then we have another wall here to match that one. So I'll dig all this out and uh, get some layout done. One, two, three and there. Uh, get some layout done. And then I'll be right back with you. So we have RF tools now. Let me just break this down. I've already done it. Now you could be just face palming thinking, well, I wanted to see how he did it. But the thing is, it's been such a while since I've done this. I thought uh, I'd have a finagle with it off camera just to make sure I could get it right. And then, uh, then I'll show it to you once I've got something up and running. So all I've got in the background here is there's a little uh, tesseract back here. Let me just show you that. There it is. And that's just supplying power. So let me just put this all back together. That power is being fed across the bottom here and also into these. Now RF tools does take a lot of power. So bear that in mind when you come into your build. That's not the steps, is it? Hmm. That's interesting. What's occurring here? You take those off, you get fancy stairs. Yeah. Oh well, let's just see if I've got any more of those. Uh, marble stairs. There we go. Don't know what that's all about. Some ID conflict there. To so pop these back down. So let's go through these machines one at a time. You need a Dimlet researcher. This fellow here, if you... I'll just have a look in my inventory. And I don't have any. Uh, but this will take uh, unknown dimlets. So if I call it dimlet, like this. So you'll pick these up as you go around, these unknown dimlets. Oh, I do have 16. Let's get eight of those. Let's put all these back. Don't need those. So in this dimlet researcher, you just throw in your dimlets like that. And what that'll do is it'll research them, and I've got it funneling down into a little filing cabinet, and they're all in here at the moment. I also have a chest on top where I can just throw in everything I need and it'll filter through automatically into this big filing cabinet down here. Now, as I say, I've been running this uh, with all my old dimlets in, so it's fairly chock-a-block at the moment. Uh, and with this, you'll get biome controllers, you'll get uh, whether or not it's a, you want a single biome or you want a warm one, wet one. Um, medium size, magical, filtered, fields, dry, cold, all kinds of things. These digit numbers down here, they can add variance to uh, an existing dimlet. Well, an existing, uh, where are they? An existing one of these, a dimension tab. Now, I'll just go through those in a second, so just bear that in mind. Let's just scroll back down here. Then you have the effects you have on that biome that you're wanting to create and the features you want in that biome. Further down we have liquids, what type of liquids you want in the world that you can specify. They don't always turn out uh, the liquids that you want, sometimes it does randomise it, How it doesn't seem to matter how many of these put in, sometimes it does randomise it and you don't get certain, block, certain liquids. Uh, you also have materials. So you could have a whole world full of aluminium ore, for example. Uh, or brown stained glass, endstone. There's quite a lot of things here. Moving down, we have what mobs you want in the world. Now, the idea is I want to make a dragon world eventually. But to do that, we need to go to the end. I need to get a syringe and hit the dragon a few times so I can make one of these, these mob uh, dimlets. That's way down the line yet. But I want to do that so I can create a world so I can farm ender dragons. So what else do we have? We have what colour the sky is going to be, the, the moon, the fog, the sun. Uh, further down, we have special dimlets, like no animals, shelters, spawns, 
uh, structures, different structures you can have, that, or you can have none if you wish. Uh, what kind of terrain style you like? Uh, flat's good for quarries. Uh, all kinds of bizarre things. Grid will put uh, each biome in uh, a tiled area like a chessboard, which is a bit weird. Uh, whether you have islands, or you can create a void world if you wish. Uh, I have no idea what a plateus. Plateus? I'm guessing it's a plateaued world. But yeah, you've got all kinds of like near lands. I think there's a far lands one somewhere. And at the bottom, you've got what kind of time you want. And the weather that you have as well. The, re the good thing about the time one, if you have, say, time noon, uh, it will always keep the sun uh, at the top, so you will have a night, which again is good for a quarry world. I will take you to my quarry world that I've already created, which is probably... Actually, I've just accidentally picked some up there. Which is probably stopped now. Let's just have a look. Yep, that seems to have stopped. So next to it, you have a Dimlet Scrambler. What does this do? Well, let's say for example, you have, as you can see here, I've got duplicates going on. So let's go down to some, one of these that has, oh, there we go, three. So I'll take, leave one in there, take two out. Come down a bit more. Uh, you got another one there. So one more of those, that'll give me four. That'll, that'll do for now. If you need three, random dimlets and what it'll do is it will scramble those and give you one dimlet on that side as you can see it'll do that and it's given me a seasonal forest dimlet that then gets put back in here so if you get too many of one dimlet you can always mix it up and create other dimlets you can't do it with the craftable ones uh, because they're craftable if you could do that then you could just keep crafting these and then keep creating random dimlets so certain ones will not give you any uh, any scramble effect whatsoever. Moving on, let's just ignore that one for the moment because that's a higher tier one. Uh, let's move on to the Dimension Inscriber. In here is where you create uh, the world that you want. So what you need to do is you need to create an empty dimension tab. Let me just have a look how you make one of those. Diamond. I can spell dimension. Now I've got one already crafting here, so I can just auto craft it. But if we look here, it's nice and simple. Just paper and redstone gives you one of these. And let me just craft one. So I can just run this through with you. Let's pop one of those down there. What's that? Sludge pit. Don't need that. Let's throw that back in the scramble. So what you would do in here is. Oh, I've already got one. You'd create the biome you want. So let's let's just go ahead and create a biome. Let me get rid of these for now. And I'll pop them back in there. So I've done some test worlds already. Uh, just so I could get a quarry world. So I could get these dimensional shards that you require to infuse these. But we'll get back to that. Uh, so let's have a look. See what kind of world we want to create. So let's start with the material that the world is going to be made of. Let's just pick one of these at random. Shall we have... Uh, what shall we have? This is the thing when you need to decide. Uh, have we got a redstone one in here? Just a normal redstone. Because the problem with the nethers is you get explosive... Uh, I'm just trying to look now. Ex Look, I don't think I've got a redstone one. No, I haven't. Well, how rude. Yeah, nether ore can explode, which is never good. So, if you go into that world and you do any digging, you'll hear the familiar hiss of like a creeper, and then it will start exploding, and then your whole world will start exploding, which is not good. So let's... Oh, decisions, decisions, decisions. What can I get here? Light blue stained clay. That'll do. Let's try that one. Uh, and then we need... What do we need next? The liquid that we require in this world. So let's go for... You know, blood, jelly, fruit juice. Why would you need fruit juice? Why on earth would you need fruit juice? We've got more blood, honey, hooch. 
life essence, uh, liquid redstone, no, liquid sunshine, no idea what that is. Now as you can see underneath it will give you the create cost, how much it costs in power per tick, because as I did say before, RF tools demands a hell of a lot of power, so make sure that you've got enough power. If you don't have enough power, uh, what can happen is that you the dimension you create can collapse with you in it, which is never good. Uh, so let's do this molten energetic alloy. Let's try that one. So let's pop these in here. So we'll have the material, we'll have the liquid. Now let's have a look for the biome that we need. And let's grab... Uh, See, this is the problem. Decisions, decisions, decisions. There's an oil field, Extreme Hills Plus. Enchanted Forest, uh, Lush Desert, Ice Plains, Spikes. Uh, shall we go with that? Let's let's try that. It's been a while since I've seen an ice plane. So let's pop that in for now. Sometimes it warns you that there's dangling modifiers. Uh, that means that if you've got a modifier that will affect something and you've not specified what it is, like I, there I've got liquids, but I've not specified any kind of uh, liquid modifier. So if I set up... Uh, do we have a flat? No, let's go for a magical one. And let's throw that back in. And effect... Well, effect none, because sometimes you can get bad effects like uh, fatigue, slowness, uh, all that kind of weirdness going on. Let's have another feature as well. Let's have huge liquid orbs. Let's try that. Huge liquid orbs as well. And then what else can we have? We've got the liquid. We've got the material. Mobs. Let's have no mobs. Where's my mob non? Did have a mob non somewhere. Oh well, let's just have. Have we got default? No. Right, let's just have no mobs. And then the sky, we're not bothered about that. And let's have structures. So let's have fortress. Now, again, it might not create these, but it may. You never know. Terrain flat. Didn't let's try that and then we'll have time of constant morning why the heck not and we'll have I think that's it Let, let's just try that for now so we'll pop that one in that one that 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 it will still give you this sometimes too many biomes specified for magical so what's the magical one that I've got in here? This controller. So let's change this controller. And we'll get... Oh, let's... Uh, controller single. And that will just give you one biome. So it's saying okay. So that was the problem. Uh, the single will just give you one total biome for your entire world. It won't mix it up or anything like that. So what you do with that is you then store it, you then create a Realize Dimension tab. It doesn't have a name at the moment, so let's just call this what's it supposed to be. Uh, what was it supposed to be? That's the point. Can't remember. Oh, God, I've just made this as well. Let's have a look at that extract. So it's an ice plane. Yeah, so we'll call it ice planes like that and then restore it and it'll have a name now let's pop this into this one here now this is the dimension builder in a dimension builder it'll take power push it into your dimension tab like so and it will sometimes take forever depending how many things you have in here and how much power they require because obviously if you want in a basic planes world with nothing much going on then it's going to it's going to build it fairly quickly but if you want specifics then each of those take a certain amount of power and that will take longer for it to actually build but this is nearly there plus I've, I've already infused this as you can see at the top it says infused 100 percent 
Because in any world you create, you can also get an extra block, which is called a dimensional shard. I wonder if we have any in here. Let's have a look. You can get these little fellas, dimensional shards. And they come from these dimensional shard ores. Now those can only be found in RF worlds. So you need to create a world before you can start getting those. Once you've got those, it takes about four stacks per machine in here, because you put your stacks in here and then what you want to infuse on the right hand side. And it's roughly four stacks per, per machine that you have. Some of them don't really need it. I mean, like you could, you could infuse the inscriber, but once you've inscribed everything, you don't need that anymore. So it's a bit of a waste of time. All that'll do is it'll make it go quicker. Uh, in case of other machines, it will make them go slightly faster. Like this has got 100% infused, so this goes a lot quicker. And I've also infused the matter transmitter and the dialing device because then they take less power. That's the only benefit you get there. Next to this, we've got a destination analyzer. Now that's got no GUI, so you can't click on it, but that works in tandem with the dialing device. So just to run through this again, we've created the dimension. It's there. It's going to cost 1481 RF per tick. Uh, and the current power is for an a gazillion zeros. So what we need to do in here, I've got a base transmitter, which is this fella, base transmitter. And I've got this one, which is a base receiver. So you need one of these to transfer off and you need one of these to come back. Now, I've got the enhanced charm of dislocation, so I can just walk back here when I want. If you don't have them, or you don't have any form of pedestals or any other way of coming back, you will need to create one of these in your world and sync it uh, to this area, pick it up and take it with you. So that you can, sorry, one of these, sorry, a transmitter. When you get to the world, you'll see there'll be one of these there. You need another one of these to link it back to this one. So you can just jump back. That's very important, otherwise you will be stuck in that world. So, on the dialing device, what we've got here? We've got this one, which is called ID12 Ice Plane. If we look here, we've got Ice Plane. There you go. Now, the destination analyzer next to it, if you have it, it will have this button here. If you don't have it, that will be grayed out like the others. All that does is check to see if the power over there is okay. If there's not enough power going to it, that will be red. And then what we do, select base, we want to go from here to there, and then we'll go dial like that. Oh, I'm all, I was already stood in it. <laughs> I was gonna say to you, don't stand in it straight away. What's this? Exit. Hmm, interesting. Uh, I was gonna say, don't stand in it straight away. And I was going to show you the colours, but I'll show you that when we get back. So here we are, in our little ice plane world. Uh, we've got some very weird structures. We've got, looks like we're off world completely, because that seems to be the planet Earth back there. Yes. So, yeah. Right. Uh, so you can go wandering. It's always best to create uh, a little beacon as to where you are. So you can always find your way back. As I say, there's your matter receiver, uh, and it'll have a name, and then if you brought your other one with your transmitter, you can pop it there, and then you can tell this that you want to go back, back home. There's a slime island up there. So there is randomness in the world, so let's just go wandering. This is full of packed ice. Now I'm wondering if we've got any of that redstone liquid we've asked for. Probably not. We might have them in these orbs. Let's go have a look at the orbs. We have water, which is odd in a nice world, because you'd think it may, may be made of ice. But we have got light blue stained clay and lava. Oh no, it's energetic alloy. Intriguing. I, can't, I thought we got redstone in this, but we didn't, did we? Now I'll just get my fluid back on my drum and uh, let's scoop some of this up. This looks like lava though. Molten energetic alloy. And uh, energetic. Ah, that's the Ender I.O. stuff, okay. So what you can do is you can come here and you can just suck out all the, the goodness from the worlds uh, and then kill them off if you don't need them. That's always the best thing to do. You can actually make a complete diamond world if you wish. Uh, you can make anything you want out of RF tools. It's very OP. 
I have to say. Again, the only downside is the power requirements. Whereas if you want to do this without using power, the only way to do it is through Mistcraft. Which, again, is the same kind of same kind of idea. I know that Bugsy on the server currently uses Mistcraft. Uh, and it's really good for Corey's is Mistcraft because you don't have to use any power whatsoever. You can just happily create these. And uh, yeah, it'll just constantly run. But if you want in a little bit of something special, if you want a little bit of randomness, uh, I totally advise going with RF Tools. It's an amazing little mod. And yeah, so let's have another nosy round while I'm doing this. Uh, I'm assuming what you usually find in these worlds as well are little houses, little white houses, which are the RF Tools libraries. And in there, you'll find more dimlets that you can use. The higher rarity, the better. Uh, so like the Chaos Dragon, I think is rarity 6. Uh, could be wrong. Yep, more energetic alloy in there. So there's no real variance in this world. Just have a look over here. No, just more more big, big domey things. Uh, oh, we've got bees. Got some uh, winter bees down here. Let's take some packed ice. Why the heck not? Yep. And so yeah, you can make some bizarre things out of RF tools. I do have a video, uh, a little parody video I did uh, when I used to use RF tools, which I will uh, link on the screen right now. Uh, feel free to go and enjoy a bit of silliness with RF tools. If you want, you can make it just a random uh, dimension. You don't have to put any modifiers in there whatsoever, uh, and it will create the most bizarre worlds you've ever seen. Uh, your fire in the sky and tendrils for land, all kinds of. Oh, there we go. That's what I was looking for. Oh, I've got one next to each other. That's rather good. So let's just zip over here, and I'll show you what I mean. These are the little RF tools libraries. I just pop a hole in the top and then you'll always have a chest and you'll have three of them on the wall. So what we've got in here, we've got Slowness Dimlet and Lush Swamp and six unknowns. So let's get those and then you always have these on the walls and that is a Nether Peridot and Molten Obsidian Dimlet but that's rarity three. You always find higher rarities in here so let's just throw those back into our system. Land of Lakes Marsh, right. Throw those back in. And we do have another one. Let's just, before we end this episode, just go and... Where's it gone? Where's it gone? It's right next to us. Uh, there it is. So we'll just have a quick look at this one. And I think we'll end the episode there. Because I think we're overrunning slightly. What do we got in here? Liquid black and highlands. I mean, so you could get a, a world with black ink and you'll never have to worry about ink again. So let's have a look here. We have got mead, extreme hills edge and endstone. We've had those before. But still, you know, it's something different. So I'll just sit on top of here while we end the episode. So yeah, hope you've, uh, hope you've enjoyed the episode. It's always fun to play with RF tools. I like it a lot. I do like it a lot. Uh, is this world moving? No, no, it's stuck in time, isn't it? As, as morning. So, yeah. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. If you didn't, don't. That's that's all I ask, you know. Try have fun. That's all I try and do. And, uh, oh, the lights have come on. So, uh, yeah, I shall love you and leave you and see you on the flip side. And as always, much love. Mm.